Then the Major drew his sword, pointed it skyward, and yelled, For Pennsylvania and the Union, charge! Lancer lunged forward, but Gabe hesitated. For an instant, Gabe wanted to sound retreat to save Davy fighting in the front lines, but there was Orly somewhere on the other side. Again, the Major commanded, Charge! Charge! But no sound came from the boy. What could he do? Suddenly, Gabe knew what to do. He forced a deep gulp of air and blew charge as fast as he could. Then, unnoticed in the confusion of battle, he ran onto the battlefield and East instantly blew retreat, mimicking Orly's style, and for a brief moment the firing stopped. In this deadliest of battles, later known as Pickett's Charge, with thousands of casualties in just 50 minutes, there was only one small section of the battle line where not a single life was lost on either side. At dusk on that final day of the bloodiest battle in American history, a young bugler climbed to the top of Cemetery Hill. He stood on a caisson to make himself taller, for he was only eleven. He faced west across the valley, raised his bugle to his lips, and played taps. The bittersweet refrain seemed to rise up from the boy's very soul and join in harmony with the softening twilight. Both gray and blue caps were moved and held over hearts. The shell-shocked folks of Gettysburg emerged from their cellars, and for a moment the pain of the wounded was seized. And far out on the battlefield, one injured horse rose to his feet and slowly limped toward the sound. The boy held the last note for a very long time, so long that it seemed to reach eternity. Then, faintly from far across the valley, a bugler answered with a sad downturn that echoed through the darkening hills. The boy in blue drew to attention, lowered his bugle, and saluted. The Battle of Gettysburg was over. All through that long night, the young bugler tenderly cared for his wounded brother and the injured horse, and when the first pale pink blush of dawn crept into the eastern sky, he sat by the campfire next to his brother and etched these words on his bugle, For all my brothers on this day and forever. It was July 4, 1863.